Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Amid the political upheaval, work is continuing with plans to pilot a model for introducing independent transmission projects. Terence Krima joins me to discuss the prospects. Hi, Terence. Hi, oh, Sashni. Despite the political upheaval, work is continuing in the electricity sector. Yes, it's a 24-7, 365 business, and it has to continue. But the uncertainty really is around the reform that are being pursued really under the Energy Action Plan, was, which was launched a couple of years ago under the Cyril Ram Ramaphosa administration. And obviously, now we have to see how the new government will form, the new government of national unity, and we will have to see how that, um, how that is led, who are the members of the cabinet, and what that potentially means for reforms generally, so not just in the electricity space. But the message seems to be that the Energy Action Plan is proceeding uh, in a way that is uh, successful. So we know we've gone quite a long period, well over 70 days now without load shedding. And that's really been about the focus on fixing uh, the Eskom coal fleet. Obviously, it's precarious because until we have sufficient new reliable supply uh, in the system, there's, there can be load shedding again if a number of units go down. But We've had this, this period now where we haven't had load shedding. And there's also another bigger reform agenda wrapped with inside that um, uh, uh, energy action plan relating to the, the, the tr uh, transmission grid, the private sector participation within that, the private sector participation more generally in the electricity sector, the electricity regulation amendment bill, which has gone through both uh, the National Assembly and the NCOP and is now sitting uh, on the president's desk for signature. What happens with that is a question because there are concerns about the constitutionality of some of the clauses there. So will the president send it back for amendments or will he assign it um, and you know maybe leaving out some of the controversial elements to that? Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but that is an important uh, part of the reform agenda. But generally the work seems to be continuing, but there's a little bit of a wait and see attitude around some of the big ticket items that need to continue now that we have a new administration. And a key new development is the piloting of the independent uh, transmission projects. That's correct. You know, uh, you know, this is a, a monopoly business. It's be, it was inside or is inside uh, Eskom, which is a vertically mono uh, integrated monopoly. The Energy Action Plan and the reforms are talking about unbundling Eskom into its three components, generation, uh, the National Transmission Company, South Africa, which should be operationalized now in July, uh, and then the distribution entity, which will be one of distribu uh, the distribution ent entities amongst the many municipal distributors. So that is, is continuing, and we'll also have to see how the new administration affects that, but that should continue. And then there's a view that you know the, the big blockage now to adding the sort of renewable energy that we need at scale uh, to bring that reliability that I was talking about earlier um, is is going to need much more grid capacity. Now, uh, Eskom has a transmission development plan that generally is there's some um, you know opposition to it, but on the whole, people I think have bought into it. But the issue is the scale. Uh, uh, and this pace at which that has to be rolled out and how to fund that. So we know that Eskom and the NTC that's being unbundled just doesn't have the financial wherewithal to really go at the pace. It doesn't potentially have the capacity, even though it doesn't build it itself, it relies on the private sector, but even to get the projects across the line. These, take, these are very difficult projects to get across the line because they, they run across so many different property sites. Uh, you have to get those servitudes, you have to get to the land acquisitions, and if necessary, you, you actually have to expropriate the land. So it's a, it's a major issue. But it's really about capacity, financial uh, and technical capacity in Eskom, and therefore we're looking at these independent transmission projects, RTPs. Now we all know RPPs, but now RTPs are, are the next potentially big thing but we some way uh, to go before we have a procurement program. And we don't even have a procurement infrastructure. So there's talk about where an uh, RTPO, an inter, uh, 
independent transmission project office should be located. DBSA seems to have put its hand up. It's always been linked to the IPPO. Uh, that's between National Treasury, DMRE, and DBSA. There's always been that nexus around the IPP office. So it's, it's possible that they're going to be a, a major player in this. And, the, and it looks like the IPP office could add this um, uh, string to its bow as well. So we'll be overseeing this, but it, we will have to wait and see. But it will be a major change if we have this uh, putting out tenders for certain uh, transmission infrastructure. It won't just be lines, it will be substations, etc. Um, and we'll have to see uh, how that evolves. We know that the electricity minister of the sixth administration was a big proponent of this and has been working hard on this. And we know that the, this is not unique to South Africa. Many other countries have put in RTPs and it will be on a build, operate and transfer type basis, it seems, as, it, as this happens around the world because these are monopoly. This is the monopoly part of the electricity system. Uh, the wires business, uh, that economies of scale, it makes sense. And having open access and a neutral sort of platform makes sense. So it will be state owned and led ultimately, but the private sector will potentially build, operate, own, and then eventually transfer. We don't know what period, whether it'll be 20 years, 30 years, we'll have to see. So it's early days and there's some way to go, but I think the feeling is unless we bring in private sector capital uh, expertise and capacity, it's going to be hard to meet the TD uh, transmission development plan targets of, say, for instance, just on the rollout right of power lines, never mind all the substations, etc., is 1,400 kilometers a year. Currently, Eskom is doing nowhere near that, and it would be historic levels. These are, these are not levels that Eskom has ever done, even in the past. So uh, um, it's, it's a big... Um, uh, goal and uh, the crowding in of the private sector is seen as one way of helping us achieve it. But South Africa needs to better manage existing grid assets. Yes, there's also a study released this week from the Res for Africa uh, Foundation showing that you know, when the benchmarking is done around how we queue RPPs for very <laughs> precious grid capacity at the moment, we are really not really benchmarking well in terms of the time it takes to get these uh, the grid connection agreements in place that allows these IPPs to develop. And then also we know if we go back, we didn't have a curtailment framework, which actually meant that we didn't sweat the asset really very well. We do now have that 10% curtailment, which is going to unlock important capacity in the Western and the East, uh, Eastern Cape in particular, where Previous to that, there was a view that there's no more grid capacity, you can't build here. But this is where a lot of the pipeline has matured around those jurisdictions, especially for wind, because they're seen as the best, uh, the wind jurisdictions in South Africa still. There is good wind, wind capacity nationally, and we're seeing some of that happening in Mpumalanga where there is grid capacity. But, you know, that's really where the mature project pipeline is. And it takes a long time to develop a, a wind project pipeline. So it would be important to sweat the asset, but then not only have a curtailment framework, but also a proper framework for allowing people to get access quickly, more quickly to the grid uh, when they apply. And we know we've now got this hybrid system of public procurement and then private power purchase agreements that are happening in parallel. And that has made it more tricky for uh, Eskim still, it's going to be the NTCSA soon, but Eskim in the way they allocate that. And so there's a view that we need to move to more of a clustered assessment approach, release a certain amount of capacity at a time, release uh, and then go through a gated process, which needs regulatory approval. And we know those processes also take long. So I think we need to really get some certainty around our queuing rules. Um, and also with, when Eskom or NTCSA reserves or preserves grid capacity, you know, have some time definition around that. That's also before the regulator, whether they're allowed to discriminate against private projects in favour of the public procurement. We'll have to see if the, the regulator agrees and there's a process underway now. But we really do need certainty. If we're going to preserve and reserve, how long 
what is the time definition, how much capacity, what happens to other projects in the meantime, and then when there's a queuing system, how can we accelerate that? Because we know ultimately, yes, we've gone without load shedding for some time now, but ultimately these coal f this coal fleet is aging, it's unreliable, unpredictable, we need to replace it with new, more reliable uh, electrons in the system, and it's going to be important that the RPPs, which are the future, ESCOM's going to have its own generation, but are the future of, of generation generally, have certainty around the queuing rules, around curtailment, and then we should operate in best practice so it doesn't take so long to get these projects across the line. Thanks for speaking with us, Terence. Sure. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.